Is there a global energy war going on behind the scenes of the Qatar World Cup? But this time it's not oil or natural gas, it's hydrogen energy. Really? Well, in the World Cup, Qatar used a lot of green energy. For example, the electricity used in the World Cup came from a photovoltaic power plant built by China, and a large number of new energy vehicles were used in the transportation equipment, including the most popular hydrogen cars. Hydrogen is one of the most controversial energy sources, but Qatar has put a lot of effort into hydrogen energy. That's odd. Why is a Middle Eastern country that is rich in oil and gas making a big effort to develop hydrogen energy? Isn't hydrogen energy going to be eliminated? This obviously breaks the inherent perception of many people. In today's video, let's talk about why Middle East oil countries like Qatar want to vigorously develop hydrogen energy. Hi! Welcome to Auto Age, and let's move on to today's topic. Many people think that Middle Eastern countries are not suitable for the development of clean energy. In fact, it is not true. They also have great advantages in the development of clean energy. Take Qatar as an example. Qatar has a tropical desert climate, with little precipitation and a severe lack of rivers and water resources, making it unsuitable for hydropower development. However, Due to the high temperature and aridity and the wind, they are very suitable for the development of photovoltaic and wind energy, especially photovoltaic power generation is more efficient, which is mainly related to the long summer time in Qatar. So in Qatar's 2030 vision, photovoltaic power generation will exceed 20%, for which Qatar also set up a state-owned solar company. So, since these energy exporting countries are suitable for developing clean energy, why do they choose hydrogen energy? First of all, hydrogen energy is beneficial to their domestic energy transition. Although clean energy sources such as hydropower and solar power have good prospects, they also have a fatal drawback, that is, they are not stable. When it comes to sunny days, high temperature and strong wind season, these energy sources generate more electricity, and there will be very little when it is bad weather. The electricity is difficult to store, resulting in a particularly troublesome grid mediation, either resulting in a large amount of wasted electricity or insufficient power supply, and the life and production will also be affected. In the case of renewable energy generation in the UAE, for example, they have plenty of sunshine and a cooler climate in the spring when a lot of power has to be wasted or used elsewhere, while in the summer months they occasionally run into power shortages. And this fluctuation is not just seasonal, it may be by the day or even by the hour, one day the sun is shining, the next day the wind and rain, even day and night can affect the efficiency of power generation, for the whole country's power grid, it can cause a very big impact. So, for the energy exporting countries, although they can produce high-quality clean energy, they still need traditional energy to guarantee the supply. And hydrogen energy is the perfect solution to this problem for them. First of all, hydrogen is a secondary energy source, which can store energy. Secondary energy means primary energy after processing, such as oil, coal, wind energy, Light energy and so on are all primary energy, the efficiency of these energy sources is very low directly, usually they are converted into electricity and then used, this electricity is secondary energy. Hydrogen energy is also a very efficient secondary energy source. It can convert the electricity from photovoltaic and wind power plants into hydrogen energy through electrolysis, and then into electricity and heat energy and only water is produced in the process, which will not cause secondary pollution. To put it bluntly, it is energy storage that converts excess electricity into hydrogen energy so that it can solve the problem of power fluctuations. Of course this is what hydrogen can do for the countries like Qatar, but this is not the main reason why these countries are developing hydrogen, but rather the huge benefits and status that hydrogen can bring to energy exporting countries. For energy exporting countries, 
Their biggest problem is the decline of the world's energy status and the future uselessness of vast quantities of oil and natural gas. This problem can't be compensated by photovoltaic and wind energy, after all, these two energy sources are abundant again, it can only be used in their own house, but hydrogen energy can solve this problem very well. To put it bluntly, behind the energy game, everyone is working for themselves. According to the forecast of the International Hydrogen Energy Commission, by 2050, the global hydrogen energy market will reach $2.5 trillion, and even within China, hydrogen energy will reach a trillion yuan. In addition, energy countries such as Qatar have their own advantages in the development of hydrogen energy, as they are located in an important position in the world of navigation, with three sides of the sea, very well-developed transportation, and in the middle of two major energy-consuming countries, China and Europe which is very conducive to the transportation of hydrogen gas. Of course, most people are skeptical about hydrogen energy, for example, it is difficult to transport and store hydrogen, and hydrogen cars cannot surpass battery electric cars, etc. It is difficult to solve these problems. I agree with these statements, and I personally prefer electric energy. I always emphasize that there is no conflict between hydrogen energy and clean energy development, and it must be a diversified energy source in the future, and although hydrogen energy may not be the mainstream energy, its status will definitely not be low. Even in China, hydrogen energy is in fact being vigorously laid out. We will not talk much about it here as we will know it by checking the information on the internet. As for the technical problems, it is not a problem anymore when other countries form a consensus, but will be overcome slowly. For example, transportation and storage, hydrogen is indeed flammable and explosive, but converting it into ammonia can solve this problem. Ammonia is relatively stable and rich in hydrogen, so it is a very efficient medium for hydrogen storage. Moreover, ammonia is the main raw material for fertilizer, so no matter the price or the industrial chain is more perfect, so we don't need to worry about adding extra difficulties and costs. In my opinion, hydrogen has officially entered the 2.0 era, that is, the ammonia era, and the future hydrogen energy will be dominated by ammonia. This example is given not to say that ammonia must be the future of hydrogen, but to tell you that the technology can be solved, and for energy countries such as Qatar, as long as its prospect is good enough, then no country on this planet will give up, or even lay out in advance to seize the first opportunity. China is no exception, and of course Europe, America, Japan and South Korea are no exception either. Everyone has the same goal, to compete for a trillion dollar market, or if hydrogen energy becomes a mainstream energy source, no one can afford the risk of falling behind. The same goes for countries like Qatar Energy. Energy is a game of great powers, and as the Axis country of energy in the oil era, naturally they are not willing to fall behind in the new era, and hydrogen energy is the last trust of their energy, and also a strategic high point. Okay, that's all for today. Please put your comments below, and share your insightful ideas with other people. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. See you.